skip this. Hey, everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry we're a little late, but uh, what's happened is, is we got some last minute art that was not on the website. And so uh, Eric and I were like, uh, yes, let's put this up. And so we had to trade out some of what we call a mock-up because uh, the art isn't quite ready when we're doing the solicitation, but now we have the final art. So when we're running through the program uh, or through the uh, list of stuff, you're going to see the real art that hasn't, it's not even on the website yeah, yet. Yeah, well. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that's why we're a little late because I was trying to update and get uh, the, the most current image in there for you. So today we are going to be running through the products that have been announced for the, the launch of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. It's going to happen at Gen Con. Big surprise. I don't think anybody's really surprised about that. And to do a little bit of a deep dive into the products that are coming out, we got our publisher and chief creative officer, Eric Mona on. Hello. Eric, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. I love being here. <laughs> uh, is there, If there's an audio issue, uh, let me know. Um, but we, I'm, I'm seeing that we're good. Uh, maybe hit a refresh if that helps. Um, but if I'm not synced up or if Eric's not synced up, let us know. All good here. Okay. So uh, anyway. Yes, uh, sir. Thank you so much for being here. I would, I wouldn't be anywhere else, how, my friend. How has your week been, pal? Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> yes. So uh, as you mentioned, you know, this week we announced the launch slate for Pathfinder Second Edition. So not just the core rulebook and the bestiary, but adventures and accessories and all kinds of other stuff. And as you might imagine, there's lots of questions to answer, lots <laughs> yeah. of uh, lots of last minute uh, things you realize you didn't know and say, ah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a thing. It's been a little busy, but at least it's exciting. I think it's kind of exciting. The one thing that I noticed uh, when, when this whole thing kicked in is that we uh, announced, people knew that this was coming. Yeah. And uh, instead of just saying, uh, hey, uh, this is the core rulebook that's coming out. Yeah. We kicked the door down and said, hey, it's a core rulebook. It's a best year. It's all of these yeah. things. And we just dropped it right on the lap and said, check this stuff out. Indeed. Indeed. We've got quite an ambitious slate of, of bold products. Uh, well, it's always challenging, you know, when you're launching a new RPG, especially a game that fundamentally, you know, involves a, more than one book, mm -hmm. you know, and so you could do what uh, what we did with Starfinder, where it's like, okay, here's the core rule book, and then, you know, wait a few months, and then we've got monsters. You can try and uh, do it both at the same time, <laughs> which is what we're doing now, <laughs> we're doing um, now. and that, that, you know, that that's only made a little bit easier by the fact that we have been working on these rules now for a couple of years in various permutations, so um, it's not quite the same as ramping up from ground zero, but it's... Uh, Pretty challenging yeah. and pretty exhilarating in many ways. Yeah, uh, and I think that um, you know the, the more you put out all at once, uh, mm. the more it is to take in. And these yeah. are available for pre-order right now. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and so we thought because of all of those things, everything coming out at once, because you can pre-order it right now if you want. People have questions. Absolutely. Uh, so we thought, let's do this. Let's get let's get let's Eric Mona go on over the whole thing with the publisher. Let's make this happen. Right. Um, so uh, so first of all, uh, how do we want to start? You just want to jump right in. I've got images of the covers you want to go through. Uh, yeah. Let's um, well, let's let's start with a little preamble let's that, do that says um, so August 1st is the date that uh, all these products are coming out. August mm -hmm. 1st is the first day of Gen Con, but they're not just coming out at Gen Con. They're also coming out in hobby retail stores, in, you know, uh, brick and mortar bookstores, anywhere that you're buying Pathfinder stuff that's a release date of August 1st. And mm -hmm. certainly the goal is to make it a worldwide release date of August 1st, sometimes with international shipping and things that, that can be a little bit of a challenge, but that's the goal, is to have it out everywhere August 1st. So, so. it's, it's a, a, a big worldwide celebration. It's as, a worldwide it celebration of Pathfinder, yes. And everybody's yes. invited. Indeed, uh, indeed. So then uh, does that mean uh, online retailers, if somebody doesn't have an FLGS next to them? Yeah, they can come um, to Paizo.com mm -hmm. um, or you know whatever, wherever they're, they're used to buying stuff. Okay. It should be available for delivery August 1st. I can't speak to the shipping policies of giant community destroying. I mean, uh, reading, reading between whatever lines. you want to call it. Yeah. Um, you know. uh, they they kind of work to their own devices. But the official release date is August 1st. Sometimes, depending on who you order for them, it might take a few days. But yeah, right. that's the goal. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, it's the day before Penguin Witch Doctor's birthday, which is why we chose oh, to release yeah, well, it. Oh, well, a secondary case. reason. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Secondary yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That Gen Con. Um, 
<laughs> and then penguins. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, happy birthday in uh, yeah. August. So yeah. um, so and and along with that, we we see every time we post anything about uh, second edition, we mm -hmm. see a lot of people, some detractors, some supporters, sure. people that are excited, people that weren't excited. Yeah. Uh, you have played the playtest, and yes. you've played second edition. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the folks were like, I don't want to play second edition because the play the playtest wasn't good. Right. Um, it you know all of these different reasons for not liking the play test after playing both how do you feel about it um well i mean I, i'm pretty pleased with what we've gotten the play test is a play test and the final version of a book is uh the attempt to make it the final version and so what we knew we were doing with the play test was pushing the envelope a little bit trying to find new solutions to old problems and uh it's always very interesting when you send that out to people and you say hey let us know what you think and if you don't like anything please be sure to tell us they will, yeah. but that's, yeah, that's true. It, it, you know, and as, as, as sometimes challenging as that is to kind of take in sort of negative, and I don't want to make it sound like there was no positive. There's a lot of positive feedback as well. People, there are key things people seem to really like, seem to really like the three action economy, for example, seem to really like a lot of different stuff. Um, but we've got over 125,000 people downloaded the free playtest PDF. Mm -hmm. A significant portion of those people then gave us feedback either through surveys or through Paizo.com message boards or through rudely worded personal Facebook messages or whatever <laughs> you might, you know, they, whatever route they, they chose to take. Um, you know, we're, we've been absorbing all of that feedback. And so from pretty much the day the playtest was released, we're working on the final version. And over the course of the playtest, the team released like I think six or seven different, here's rules updates, here's what we're thinking about doing. So Folks who paid really close attention to the playtests and particularly the updates and incorporated those into their own games, those folks probably have a, a, a better idea of what the final rules are going to look like than folks who maybe just took a peek on day one and said, oh, right. um, this looks a little bit different or maybe I'll wait and, and check it out when it's finally done. So it is almost finally done. I say almost because we're working for about the next two and a half, three weeks to finalize all the details and get it to the printer. Right. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, some folks have, have said to me, you know, like, hey, uh, how do you, how do you deal with the fact that some people had criticisms of the play test? And it's like, well, we knew going in that that's how it's going to be, is mm -hmm. that it's a play test. And when you ask people to put something through their paces, I think that the fact that some people reacted very strongly, it, it it's based on the fact that they've done that for us, you know, and if they've done that for us and they give us their feedback, um, we've taken that to heart and we've done our best to incorporate that. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, uh, people are entitled to their opinion, of yeah. course, of course. Uh, but what what the one thing that I keep coming up against, uh, especially because I do most of the social media that you see from Paizo, yeah, bless your heart. Uh, is uh, when people have automatically said, no second edition for me because I didn't like the play test. And I can't tell you how different the two well, they are, uh, in many ways, they're know, very different. I mean, there yeah. there are a lot of things that are similar. Um, and then, you know, it's always important to kind of delve into if someone says, oh, I've looked at, at uh, second edition or the playtest and it's not for me. Um, there, there's a variety of different reasons for that. You know, it could be I'm in the middle of a campaign. could be uh, I, I genuinely don't like it. Fair right. enough. could be, um, you know, I uh, until I'm ready to play my Gorin Ninja, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to play. Well, right. we're not going to have... Goran ninjas in the core rule book. I mean, that, to me, in, in a way, that that's the that's kind of the one piece of feedback that we got fairly often that it's just like, yeah, okay, I hear you, but there's really nothing we can do about it, which is like, you go from an ecosystem of 40 plus hardcover books to one, and right. people are like, well, I don't think there's enough options. And it's like, <laughs> um, well, fair enough, but we'll get there. You right. Know? Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm seeing in the chat that uh, our own poster is saying, if you haven't seen the launch products yet, you can go to PathfinderSecondEdition.com. Of course. And you can, or you can stay right here, because we're going to talk about We're going to talk all. about every single so one, and then you can go to Pathfinder Don't send them away just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that, that website is there to look at, uh, for sure. But we're, we plan to be going through everything that is on that website right well, now today. And I believe the plan is to take some questions as well at the end. That is definitely yeah. the plan. So. I would still like to be able to try to do our usual schedule, which is 30 minutes of show, yep. 30 minutes of Q&A. Sure. So Makes sense. We might try to do we'll some We'll see if uh, this old windbag can get through all of the products in 30 minutes. I'll I do my best. I can't believe you called me a windbag. No, sir. me. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, whatever. Um, so let's get to it. Yeah. The first one that I have up on the slate is the core rule. Oh, book. would you look at of that? Of course. The, the kind of the flagship book. Mm -hmm. How many pages is this thing? Well, the first edition core rule book was 576 pages long. Yes. yes. And it's massive. If there. <laughs> 
my so obviously our design team, our graphic designers, everybody involved with this product had their own sort of personal goals for the core rulebook. Mm -hmm. One of my most often stated personal goals for the core rulebook is whatever we do. Don't make it bigger than the first edition one, <laughs> right? Like 576 pages has got to be the hard limit. Right. Let's not make it bigger than that. Um, but actually, we all learned a lot from the playtest process as well because one of the things that we wanted to do or that I wanted to do with the playtest, having gone through that process with first edition once and having a sense of like, how long was that playtest book? Right. We had sort of set a 400-page goal for the play test. It mm -hmm. turned out to be 428 or something a little bit longer than that. But the goal was 400 pages. And one of the comments that we got a lot from, um, one of the critical comments we got a lot on the play test is like, the design, the graph design is a little bit harder to use than we would like. It's hard to track through the book, etc. And as a publisher, looking back on that, it's hard for me not to say, you know, if I hadn't been as focused on keeping the book delivered to 400 pages, but instead delivered a book that gave us as wholesome or as fulsome an experience as possible. And that isn't just more rules, but it's also like giving stuff the space that it needs to communicate it effectively. Right. Um, you know, that that uh, that may have been in the playtest best interests. And so uh, as we get clo get closer to the printer uh, date for the core rule book and they're putting in examples and better layout to make things more accessible and every single one of those times it's like, hey boss, the, the book's going to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> you know, it was interesting how quickly my like wall of 576 pages just collapsed. Yeah. So the actual uh, core rule book is going to be what I believe to be exactly the number of pages that it needs to be, mm -hmm. which is 640 pages. 640 pages. 600 pages. 40 pages. So uh, the question that It is, is the biggest book we've ever done. Uh, the question was, as a melee weapon, is that D6 damage or D8 uh, I damage? I believe the uh, the No Direction podcast uh -huh. officially said it it was it went from D10 to D12. D12? So they know Pathfinder as well as anybody, wow. so I'm going to say it's a D12 I trust them. damage. Yeah. I trust them, yeah. D12, yeah. so be careful. Um, all right, so that is that. That is available uh, in the version that I have here. Yeah, it is also available in a uh, a special edition. A yeah, we're edition. doing a we're doing a special edition um, sort of faux leather cover with a ribbon in there and a little deboss and some metallic ink on the cover. Um, and uh, that's still being designed, so we don't really have anything sexy to show you. There's a okay. there's an image on the website, but it's very much a placeholder. Um, and so this thing, uh, the core rulebook's fifty nine ninety nine, right? And then the the special edition's going to be uh, $79.99, so okay. just to account for the more expensive materials that go into it. Right. Otherwise, the guts right. are exactly the same. Um, and uh, uh, Steve, thanks yeah. for the 640 bits. I Ooh, see what you did there. Hey. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Okay, so then uh, next on the list... Wait, I... wait, 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 Dan. Eric, what, what do you have to say? It's 640 pages. We can't just talk about the price and the deluxe edition. What else is in that book? What else is in yes, that book? Yes, so yes, yes. So here's the thing. Yes. Uh, we, I assume basic rules are going to be in there. Very much right? so. Uh, what else can we find under the hood All right. of the CRB? Okay, so uh, one of the things that you're going to find is some of the, the pages, the extra pages, are to give stuff a little bit more space to breathe. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are to add legit more new stuff, right? And so there are more spells than there were. There are more class feats than there were. Right. There are uh, there's a lot more descriptions of equipment, for example, than there were before. Um, there's more treasure than there was before. So uh, so a lot of those things have expanded. And mm -hmm. sometimes what's also expanded is um, there are more uh, choices that you make based on your class. So for example, it's like uh, a druid you pick for you know do you want to be a storm druid or a leaf druid. Some of the classes have more of those choices than were apparent in there. Okay. Um, ancestries get bigger. Um, the uh, there's a lot of other stuff that just gets more space and more stuff. One of the things that we're we're doing, one of the pieces that's not quite 100% finalized yet, um, because what we're doing is we're running the handful of Paizo employees who are not like oh, lifelong right. gamers right, through right. chapter one with the current iteration of the um, the character sheet, which is totally different than mm -hmm. the, the playtest character sheet, and kind of just leaving them to their own devices and be like, let me know where you get confused, <laughs> you know? And so Jason and his, Jason Bullman and the design team have been kind of watching them do that. And I think that's a very critical phase to go through. And that chapter one, um, has been completely rewritten. So it's a completely different presentation which summarizes the key rules of the game up front, takes you through character creation in a way that really kind of 
um, I don't want to say hold hands, but hold your hand a little bit more through right. the process with more examples and things, a lot more graphic interest. And so um, what we're hoping is that it, because uh, there are still some differences in how character creation works in second edition and say first edition, right? There are ability boosts and those work differently than just buying your scores or whatever. So we want to make sure that the layout and the presentation and the way we're explaining stuff um, is conducive to people learning the new stuff. Right, yeah. right. There's other stuff. There's a whole secret chapter in the book I don't really want to talk about. A secret about chapter? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's just more stuff, more space, more illustrations, color illustrations. Um, so, yeah, the whole thing has grown. It's a okay. big boy or yeah. girl or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's just a it's big a book. Biggin. Yeah, it's, a it's, just, it's just chock yeah. full of information. Yep. And uh, it, it's kind of the thing where uh, you, you take the time to expand on the things that need to be expanded right. uh, and all of that. And in, in almost every case what we chose to spend more time and effort and more expansion on are things that the play testers told us they right. wanted. Both, right. again, and the informal feedback in message board posts on Paizo.com, places like Reddit, places like Facebook, whatever. Kind of however people have given us their feedback on the spectrum from politely worded, hand-delivered notes <laughs> to, you know, blistering screeds on the internet. Mm -hmm. We've been absorbing all of that over the course of the last about year. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Are we ready to move on to what Absolutely. I think? What I think kind of falls into the second book in the yeah. Uh, I think that's you know, fair. In sure. the thing, we've got uh, that beautiful Coral book. Yep. And then that leads us right into the Bestiary. Oh, it's the Bestiary. Which I think that's. I, I think all the covers here are really nice. I think. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, these two covers, the the Coral book and the Bestiary by Wayne Reynolds, mm -hmm. and both of them harken back to the first edition covers. So right. the first edition cover was literally the art order for that was, Hey Wayne, let's see Valoros and Sioni fighting a red dragon in a dungeon. Right. Which is like my favorite, most <laughs> uh, word e economic uh, art order that resulted in the best looking piece yeah. practically ever. So I love that. And it's pretty much the same thing, but this time we're doing slightly different characters. Um, with the bestiary, there's a central troll figure, which is similar to the first edition one, just to kind of lock it in people's minds. Oh, this is the bestiary. Um, but we've also changed some of the other monsters as well. So there's a hydra in the background. And then the thing that I'm very excited about is there's some kobolds along the edge. Yeah. And the kobolds have gotten a little bit of a visual update. We want, we wanted to kind of give Wayne uh, the opportunity to re-envision them in a way similar to what he had done with Pathfinder, where the you can look at the Pathfinder goblin and go, oh, that's a Pathfinder goblin and all the craziness right. that comes with that. Um, we wanted our, go our, our kobolds, which are another kind of uh, low-level menace, and in particular, which we can talk about a little bit, but in particular with some of the goblins being transitioned into a potential player character class, like, you know, we need another monster race as well. I mean, right, they're still bad right. guy goblins, don't get me wrong, but like, let's give some love to the kobolds. And so now the kobolds have their own look. You know, they're lizardy. They are. They still have draconic heritage, and that you can see through the different colors of them. But they have different shapes. They're different. You know, they can do more interesting things with their mouths. You know, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah. So that's the new kobold. Nice. Uh, yeah. Do we? What kind of specs can we uh, unleash? Well, about so the bestiary. So the original. First edition best series, 320 pages. Okay. That's, so that's you might imagine um, that I would have a similar edict of like, don't make this longer than that. Yeah. But I actually didn't. I, oh, in fact, nice. um, there was at least one period of time where I wanted to make this book super mega big um, because I know a lot of people uh, are kind of, they want to get the full sort of core system mm -hmm. in the new environment before they can have the tools to analyze whether they want to shift their campaigns to it or whether they want to play. And so I think it behooves us to get as many monsters in as possible as soon as possible. Absolutely. And so, but at the end of the day, the right number turned out to be 360 pages. So it is 40 pages longer. And there are over 400 monsters in the first book. Um, but uh, it's not quite the mega thing that would have in retrospect literally killed every member of my staff and myself. <laughs> right. So uh, so the cool thing that that does is between the bestiary and the core rule book, one's 640, one's 360, you add that together, it's a thousand pages. Yeah. So like the basic rendition of the core rules, meaning the core rule book and the bestiary, it's a thousand pages of content. It's amazing. And, and, and All that, released on the same day. Woo that is kind of the reason why for the last couple of months we've kind of gone silent yeah. about uh, second edition. Yeah. 
Um, you know, we, we have to make it. We kind of knew when we when we transitioned out of the play test, mm -hmm. and we were now focusing on second edition because the play test was gone, mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of knew there's there's going to be a lights out period where we're taking yeah. everything, yeah. doing all of this, like trying to get all this stuff yeah. written, and uh, when people were like, "What's up with the play test? Like, you know, right. what's up with that? And what right. do we find about second edition?" It's right. like that's why we were so quiet all that right. time because there was a lot of work going yeah, on. Yeah, it was interesting. The I was I was popping on to I periodically old read the Pathfinder reddits and stuff like that and I was popping on there like an hour before we announced this stuff <laughs> earlier this week and someone's like I'm really hoping we get something soon and I'm like mm -hmm -hmm. yeah you know so yeah you know uh, we're we're on the case yeah uh, we are uh, we've just released everything on paizo.com mm -hmm. next week a number of us are going to beautiful scenic Reno Nevada I lived for, Reno a, for a for uh, a trade show for the industry where retailers, distributors, and um, publishers all get together to kind of show off the year's things. So that's something that has been kind of a marker in the schedule for a long time. So we mm -hmm. wanted to share the information with the players and with our website community and all that so that we're when we go into the Gamma Trade Show next week, it's about answering questions and filling people in on strategic plans and things and a little bit less about, hey, we're doing a bunch of new products. <laughs> that was right. time for right now. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. perfect. Yep. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Steve, really quick, we're gonna we've got a lot of information to get through, but we're still gonna try to make time for questions at the end. So, uh, if you're asking questions, I may not be able to get to those just yet, but we're hoping for time later. So. Yep. Um, all right. So we've got the bestiary. Yes. What else? Let's see. Then from there, we'll go on right into the uh, world guide. Yes, the Lost Omens yes. World Guide. So this is interesting. So this is kind of an everything as old as new again sort of approach, <laughs> right. right? In that uh, when we were first talking about the world of Galarian and the campaign setting back in like 2006, 2007, mm -hmm. like early, 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 like when we had like two iconic characters at that <laughs> point, right? Because Wayne was still painting them, right? <laughs> right? So very, very early. We're starting to have conversations about what the world is like. Mm -hmm. And within the context of our first Adventure Path Rise of the Rune Lords, uh, the world is heavily based on Varicia, which is from our creative director, James Jacobs's campaign, right? But we knew that Varicia was one region of a much larger world. And we wanted to make sure we were able to tell different theme stories that appeal to different people and that allowed for more variety within the genre of sword and sorcery, right? So... Uh, we had a big conversation. What do we call the campaign setting? What's it gonna What's it gonna be? We'd figured out Galarian, or I, uh, I made it up uh, pretty <laughs> early on, you know. Oops. But it's I have another rule, and and people who have bought a bunch of our products will know that we violate this rule from time to time. Right. But I don't like to have things that I that I call sort of nonsense words in the titles of books. So if it's like the Galarian Guide, people who really know, oh, that's the Pathfinder world, whatever. That's good, but like a a buyer at a bookstore who's trying to decide how many hundreds or thousands of copies of book they're going to order, right. they sometimes get stopped cold on stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we wanted to have a name for the campaign setting that we really, really liked. And we talked it through and talked it through and talked it through. And I was like, okay, well, it's all around the inner sea. It could be the inner sea. Um, and then, again, came up with the idea <laughs> of, well, the 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 fire that lights the current era of the campaign setting is the death of Aridin, the failure of prophecy, and most importantly, player characters being able to be control of their own destiny. Right. Part of that was because prior to Pathfinder, we James and I had edited Dungeon Magazine for several years, and we were just tired of adventure proposals that went that were based around prophecy because we felt like that really took the power out of the players' hands. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted to like close that door to all of our authors like right away. You right. Know? Um, right. But what that did is it kind of gave the reason for like why is the campaign setting happening now as opposed to other times. And so we came up with the the name the Age of Lost Omens. And that, of course, has been the name of the era, the current era of Pathfinder since the beginning. Um, but we never quite pulled the trigger on like, no, and that's also the name of our campaign setting. Yeah. And yeah. that trigger is now well and fully pulled. <laughs> Probably should have done it in 2007, <laughs> uh, but we're doing it now. We're doing it and now. And <laughs> so uh, the Lost Omens World Guide is a 136-page guidebook to uh, the inner sea region in the Age of Lost Omens. Now, it has other bits about Tian Sha and Kazmaron and stuff like that, but it is a reintroduction to the setting and a representation of the setting that breaks down the, let's call it 50 different nations in that region into 10 
geographically contiguous and thematically contiguous regions. And we feel like that's an easier way for people to kind of digest the whole campaign setting. Yeah. Um, and so what this is, is it's a, it's a dive into the, the campaign setting kind of on that level. So it's not got six pages per country. We'll be getting into that stuff later. We're going to be delving down deeper as we go. But we wanted to kind of, this is, uh, uh, it might even be, for people who've been with Pathfinder for a long time, it might be appropriate to consider this a replacement sort of for the gazetteer, that original presentation of yeah. the campaign setting. But there's a lot more pages. <laughs> we know what game system we're doing it for now, whereas before right. uh, it was pretty, the gazetteer was largely absent of rules. This has got new backgrounds for your character if you're from one of those 10 regions. It's got an archetype for each of those 10 regions. Oh, and nice. many of those archetypes are things people will find familiar. Some of them are not. And so there's a whole bunch of new stuff. And what this book gives us the opportunity to do is we have always sort of assumed that the timeline of Galarian marches forward at the same rate as the timeline of our planet. So when we launched Galarian in, in uh, 2007, the official date was 4707. The official date of Galarian right now is 4719. And so when we put out this book, we will be catching up the timeline to 4719. So if you've been playing Adventure Paths, for example, right. some of the ramifications of successful conclusions of those Adventure Paths are going to be coded into the system. And so, nice. you know, Taldor will have a new leader, and the Whispering Tyrant will have just arisen, uh, broken free of Galluspire, trashed the nation of Last Wall, and... Uh, we... Whatever happens at the end <laughs> of uh, Tyrant's was, Grasp will have happened. Saying, we might want right? to... <laughs> but so there's there's just a little bit of a, 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 a repositioning of some of the countries and things like that right. to accommodate for largely um, in-world changes that have happened on screen through adventure paths and things. So something people have often asked of like, hey, the nation of Galt, that's been in active revolution for a long, long time. Are you guys going to change that? Are you going to resolve that? And the answer, I mean, spoiler alert, no, because <laughs> where we want to resolve that is in the pages of an adventure path, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so we've done scores of adventure paths at this point, and so we're going through and kind of adapting those. So New Thassalon is part of the new campaign setting. Ravenel is part of the new campaign setting. There are a couple of other changes that we've implemented um, that don't necessarily come from the campaign setting as well. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, one of the things that we took a look at with the Mwangi Expanse uh, is how do we define this region more from the perspective of the people who are from that region as opposed to people who are discovering it coming from outside. Right. So a little bit in that case, uh, trying to make it a little bit less about sort of colonialism and, and outsiders looking inward, but more about the rich and interesting culture of the various organizations and uh, city-states and things within the Mwangi Expanse. So another new thing, and I realize I'm probably going way over time on this book, but I'm we, so excited about it. We already it. are over time, just so you know. But we started late. Uh, that so, is, you know, I think, perhaps uh, an occupational hazard of having me on the stream. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> one of the things that I'm really excited about um, this, and I'm, I'm so excited that I, I wrote this part of the Gazetteer, right. is we've always had Absalom, the city of Absalom, the city at the center of the world, literally kind of right at the center of our map or that's a bit of a misuse of the word literally but very <laughs> nearly at the center of the map <laughs> right. um, and that has of course been the headquarters of the Pathfinder Society a lot of Pathfinder Society uh, scenarios have play been there some of our very early adventures were set there but our attention was soon shifting to other parts of the world. And so short of a 64-page softcover book from like the first year and little snippets of things in books ever since uh, and a lot of stuff in the Pathfinder Society campaign. Right, right. Um, we haven't done much with Absalom. And so looking at Absalom, one of the challenges is, okay, I understand what the city of Absalom is. I understand the Cairnlands with all the dungeons just north of it. I understand that there's a town called Diabel and there's a town called Escadar, but this island is 45 miles across. What else is there? So Absalom gets its own section of this book, just like the other 10 wow. regions. And uh, I have written uh, a pretty extensive uh, gazetteer of the different areas on what we're calling Starstone Isle. So it's the Isle of Cortos. Cortos officially is the Aslanti word for Starstone. And so this is the island that Aradin raised from the bottom of the inner sea when mm -hmm. he rose the Starstone and became a living god. And so we have gone into much greater detail on Starstone Isle itself in that book. And that's one of the things that I think is genuinely new and I'm really excited about. That's amazing. And I, yeah. I'm super excited for that too. Because, oh, you know, and beautiful cover. 
Yeah. Lots of yep. information. Yep. Uh, I feel like something like this is just going to add so much more level to what you get in the core rulebook, to you know, to building characters. Agreed. And one of the things that this book has that I don't want to overlook mm -hmm. is a two-sided, full-color poster map of the inner sea area really? for the first time in years and years and years. So that will include some updated stuff. That will include some borders that maybe have shifted a little bit. And we've got two sides. One is kind of a, a, a beautiful player's side that's a little bit less information rich and you know where it's more artistic. Some of the map folios, people have seen what that kind of looks like. Right. And so that's, the, that's one side. And then there's the side I like to kind of call my side, <laughs> which is the more the GM side, which is more yeah. the like, get out your protractor and your ruler and figure out how many days it's going to take to travel from <laughs> this town to this town where we do our best. Now, it's not comprehensive in the same way that like that massive one we published. Maybe we'll do another one of those down the road. Right. But it is the first genuine new look at the current era of the inner sea in poster form. And it's coming out on launch day. On launch day. That's, yep. Speaking of launch day, what else do we have? We've uh, got yes. What else do we have? Well, oh, we've got the AP number one by Amanda yes. Hammond. Yes. Uh, Age of Ashes. Yes. I, I think it has Hell Knights. I'm In not... fact, it's called Hell Knight Hill. <laughs> yeah. The first oh, adventure. That yes. was my first tip. Off. Uh, I think we're gonna be revealing a lot more about the Age of Ashes adventure path as we go forward. Um, and so I, I, I'll talk mostly about this first adventure. Right. So it's a level one adventure. Um, you are uh, uh, natives, uh, or mostly natives, of a town uh, in Isger, um, which is. Uh, well, let's just say that if you drew a line from where the Whispering Tyrant is directly to Absalom, that line would go through Isger. <laughs> okay. um, and it's also in between uh, a couple of states like Andoran and, um, uh, well, it, it, it used to be part of Cheliax. And mm -hmm. so it's been bouncing back and forth in terms of its loyalties. It's a site of goblin blood war. It's got a lot of interesting lore to the country, but it's not a place we've we've explored in great detail before. So it's a it, it, you guys uh, live in a town. The heroes live in a town that is not far from an abandoned Hell Knight fortress. Okay, they go to explore that fortress, and they find in the basement of that fortress an ancient uh, sort of network of of portals um, that will take them to various spots all throughout the new campaign setting, including places off the map that that we've not gone to before. Oh, ever, nice. but that people are constantly asking us for. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> and in the course of doing that, the players uh, uncover a sort of a conspiracy that is geared toward unleashing a terrible flight of dragons to devastate the inner sea area. So it is a draconic conspiracy. It is a wide ranging uh, adventure path that mm -hmm. in some ways will make a perfect introduction to some of the goings on in the new campaign setting. Perfect. And the last thing I'll say about it yes. is the ultimate villain. Okay. Is a character <laughs> that Spoiler -free people uh, who have been paying attention to Pathfinder for a while uh -huh. have definitely heard of. Okay. And I cannot wait to reveal it. But okay. I'm not doing it now. Thank you. So it's going to be really interesting. I think in some ways it's going to be very surprising. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be rad. But maybe not start guessing in the chat. Don't guess in, in the chat. Case. Well, you can guess in the chat, but we're not going to say one. Well, yeah, but we don't want to. You know. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, it's about it's about lizard people and the conspiracy of lizard people. So that sounds that sounds great. I'm yep. excited for that one. Yep. Um, we have, uh, along with that, this was what took so long, folks. I'm yes. so sorry uh, that we didn't get started right on time. But this is actually the first time we're showing this. Yes, this is our first look at the complete cover mock-up for The Fall of Plague Stone, which is the first standalone adventure mm -hmm. um, in the, uh, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition line. And uh, what this is is uh, Jason Bullman, our uh, director of game design and essentially the lead designer on the, uh, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition game, uh, has provided us with a 64 page adventure um, that is a first level adventure that involves kind of trying to tell the origin story of your group. Mm -hmm. you know, how did your group get together? And the uh, answer posited by this uh, adventure is that you are caravan guards. And while you are guarding a caravan, it goes into a town called Plague Stone, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, and Plagstone is not the actual name of the town. It's more like a nasty nickname for the ah, town. I so because we okay. posted a lot of people, are like, why would you ever live in a town called Plagstone? You wouldn't. You live in a town other people call Plagstone. Right. If you want. And okay. so you go in there, and then something terrible happens, and someone is murdered, and you have to figure out who did it, and. Uh, uh, essentially, okay, so the caravan master dies, and you have to figure out who did it, or else you're going to hang for it. It's a good, and whodunit. so it's a good who done it. Yeah. It's got some wilderness elements to it. Okay, uh, it uh, has it, it shines a pretty bright light on alchemy and alchemists, uh, which is the new class in Pathfinder Second Edition, um, and it uh, is uh, yeah, and it, it is designed in many ways. Uh, for a group of folks who we know are going to be learning the rules as they go. Right. So it's not exactly like a step-by-step, -step, here's how to play Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but it is a, uh, designed specifically to roll out the rules in a way that's going to be very um, appealing to people who are all just learning the game together. Okay, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and to go along with that, we have uh, the flip mat that goes yep. along. Yep, now this is a mock-up cover, so the image there is not exactly from the, the map itself, but right. the idea here is that the uh, a, a major location, kind of the hideout of the villain, if you will, um, for this adventure, we're putting out in a flip mat at the same time. This, again, okay. is sort of patterned off of what we did with first edition Pathfinder with Jason's adventure, The Crypt of the Everflame, where we had that fit with, a, with a, a dungeon flip mat we had just put out at the same time. This is just a custom flip mat that goes with the, the dungeon hand and hand. There's actually another really interesting terrain element to this uh, adventure as well, okay. and that is that we've done a deal with uh, the guys at Dwarven Forge, and they are going to be offering like a set that is designed specifically to build locations from this adventure. Really? And mostly that's going to consist of you know existing pieces that they have, but they're even going to be doing some custom pieces that are designed specifically for the Fall of Plagstone. Really? So they'll have that nice. at Gen Con. You'll be able to order that from uh, Dwarven Forge, and uh, I think it's going to be real, real Cool. I think it's going to be real, real cool too. Yeah. Um, especially because you know we love their work. They mm -hmm. they do some fun, fun they set do. set dressing yep. things. So, yep. um, all right. So that's the flip map. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to some. Now we're kind of getting into uh, accessories. Yeah, we're roaming into the accessories land. And I should point out too, we're releasing stuff in September. We're going to release stuff in October. Yes. We're going to announce that stuff in the coming weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And it absolutely. won't be as much stuff, right? <laughs> like uh, we, we're yeah. dropping a lot of stuff at the launch and we'll give people an opportunity to catch their breath a little bit as That's well. That's fair. And us. And Well, I don't know if we'll ever get that. No, 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 absolutely not. I've been breathing since 2007. <laughs> so we have the GM screen here. Yes. Uh, there, There is a question that, so, uh, you know, the GM screen, uh, like, like you would expect, it fits in, fits out to cover all of the GM, like the GM's yeah. work and everything. It's going to hide your dirty some, little secrets. The, yeah, so that you can uh, plan to kill everybody. Uh, the GM screen also uh, has some some uh, stats and blocks. Yeah, charts on. and quick reference yeah. things on the back to speed up play. Um, I think the most exciting part of this screen, mm -hmm. um, aside from the beautiful art that uh, Ekaterina Burmack has provided for it, it's a nice four panel illustration. You can see that's just one of the panels there. Right. Um, that we're showing on the stream right now. Um, this is a landscape screen. That is something people have been asking us for forever. The first edition Pathfinder screen was a portrait screen, which is to say a tall screen. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at a book, it's like that. This one is like if you turn the book on its side. So it's wider. It's a little bit shorter, mm -hmm. which I think some people like because they, they want to be able to look their players in the eye. All you really need to do is hide that that die roll yeah. or your, your, your notes. And, um, and so... People have been asking us to do a widescreen screen forever, and that's what this is. Nice. Okay. Um, there's also some kind of fun art on the inside of it, you know, just because uh, we didn't want the the GM not to have some cool art. <laughs> so um, uh, <laughs> without going into too many spoilers, uh, one of the pieces of art that the GM will get to look at all day is um, it's next to the death and dying rules reminder in there, <laughs> and it's our iconic goblin Fumbus, the iconic uh -huh. alchemist, filled with arrows, either dead or dying. So <laughs> if you're one of the handful of people whose deal breaker is I don't like <laughs> goblins in Pathfinder, but you end up playing anyway, at least you're going to get to look at a dead goblin every day. At least there's yeah, that. Yeah, so, minor concession. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and this is the only image I have for the GM screen. I don't have the other one. Uh-huh. Okay, so there is another one. Yes. And that is like, well, we know a lot of people are going to want the landscape screen because they've been telling us they want that forever. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be some people who want sort of the traditional Paizo screen as well. And so we are making a, a, a number of... Uh, 
portrait style screens right, as well. Right. The contents on the uh, the GM side are the same, but um, instead of the illustration that uh, will be on that one, it's going to be more like the traditional Wayne Reynolds Iconics lineup. Okay. And so it'll look very similar to the, the handful of first edition screens we've done with the, the Iconic Characters lineup. If that's your preferred jam, we'll have that for you as well. That one is a Paizo.com exclusive. So the other one's available everywhere. This is the only Paizo.com exclusive product on the whole mix. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, so let's see. We've got that. And then we get into the uh, combat pad. Yeah, so combat pad, not tremendous number of changes uh, mm -hmm. to this. This is uh, mostly a rebranding, you know, to get it with the new Pathfinder logo. There are a couple of changes that uh, are, are being made to it by the design team to just account for some of the, the different number ranges and things. There's a little bit of quality of life improvements that we've gotten in terms of feedback from players. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, this is a metal... Uh, uh, magnetic screen with little magnets to not screen but tool to help you um, do initiative. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, let's see. We move on to. There it is. So now hey this is the not the character folio. Right. This is a character sheet pack. So right. very different than the character folio. The character folio is like a 16 page deep, deep dive on one character. Um, and uh, what this is, is it's actually a pack of specific character sheets for each character class. Mm -hmm. So the core rule book comes with a standard one size fits all character sheet. Right. And that'll be free online, you know, um, on paizo.com um, and uh, available as one of the pages of the book, right? The, the cool thing about that is it's widely available. Great. The challenging thing about that is that character sheet's got to include every little bit of rules, whether your character uses it or not. Right, so the the spellcaster has six attack forms on there, and the barbarian has rules about his spells and things which he doesn't have. Right. So one of the things that we wanted to do was let's create individually created double sided character sheets that are custom made for each of the classes. Nice. So that's what this contains. This also will contain a, a standard blank character sheet. This also will contain uh, some additional sheets to help you track spells, to help you track gear, mm -hmm. and so that's what that is. It'll be available as a printed product. Um, you'll have permission to photocopy stuff on there if, if uh, so that Perfect. nobody gets a uh, hoity-toity, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, FedEx Kinko's <laughs> person who's uh, giving them the axe. Um, and we'll have it as a PDF as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, Brendan, thank you for the 2750 bits. That's awesome. Uh, it's very nice. Yay. Uh, let's see. We are moving on now to the condition cards. Okay. Yes. Some some so, familiar faces. Yeah, so the condition, and again, this is a mock-up cover, so the cover will actually change. Mm -hmm. um, conditions are arguably more important in second edition Pathfinder than they were in first edition, and there are more of them. And some of them have changed. So we know that people are going to want quick reference for these things. Right. And so what we've done is we've expanded the scope of the um, of the condition card deck to be a 110 card deck with multiple copies of some of the conditions. So if a bunch of people are frightened, you can hand out some cards to, you know, your all your players. Mm -hmm. um, provided all your players is four. Four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and so there's a number of different cards for a number of different conditions. This is all just about quick reference, keeping the game moving fast and furious. Okay. Yep. And that's 19.99. That comes out again. Day one. Everything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and barring printer problems or something like that. Why? We don't even need to I talk about that. I don't even want to say those words. Um, so uh, so uh, that takes us to the end of our of our journey. What? I know. Wow. Uh, it's so a, briefly. It only took us 45 minutes to get through that. You're welcome. Um, which is, you know, it's just one of those things where, because there's so much fun stuff that's coming, it, we yeah. want to put a spotlight on it. Sure. Have a little bit of time to talk about each one of them yeah. and kind of show that part off. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, for one, am super excited for Gen Con. I cannot wait. To, I'm yeah to have people you know break open those books and start playing and, and all of that. Sort I gotta of say thing. I am super stoked for Pathfinder Second Edition. Yeah. You know, just like yeah. across the board. Like I have been play testing. I have been playing every week uh, since it came out. Um, and the group that I'm playing with, interestingly, and everyone's playing with different groups and things, but my group is not got a lot of hardcore gamers in it. Has a mm -hmm. lot of new people, like spouses of some of the of my local friends and things. And the the ease with which new players are picking up sort of the basics of Pathfinder is definitely on 
unlike what I've seen in the previous decade. Great. So in terms of like introducing the game to new people, um, I'm it, it's going really well. And there are a lot of things that even at first when I started playing, I was like, I don't know. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, that's really great. You know, so <laughs> right. um, and some of that stuff's changed. And I, I'm very eager to not be using my playtest book with a bunch of notes stuffed in it and stuff. I want to, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a book guy. I want the book, you know, so uh, I'm just very happy with where it's at right now and, and very excited. The whole team has been working super, super hard on it. And honestly, we could not do it without all the feedback that we've gotten from gamers and from people who just want to throw in their two cents. And, you know, again, um, don't worry about Paizo's ego. Like, we can take it. Like, yeah, we want yeah. feedback. Yeah. And so yeah. that has been very helpful kind of across the board. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm really excited. Where do, do you, What do you plan to be doing day one of Gen Con when this thing opens? Those doors open. Uh, are you going to be right in the thick of it? Assuming I am still alive, because I have not killed I'm, myself with overwork. For the sake of brevity, I'm going to assume you're alive. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I will try to be as close to in the thick of it as possible. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I. Uh, it can get a little bit crazy. Uh, again, it's a new edition. Who knows how it's going to go this time? You know. But. Um, it's really fun to interact with the with the the players, and uh, over the years, as Pies has gotten bigger and as my role has become as much about management and running the company as it has about making up the name of our campaign setting, um, I. Uh, I find myself trapped in meeting rooms and things at Gen Con in particular. Right. And so one of the great things about Gen Con, I'm told, is getting to uh, <laughs> see all your old friends and things as they come yeah. up to the booth yeah. and all that. And I, I always try and schedule that first couple of hours where I'm going to be in that booth no matter what. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Frankly, we need all the help we can get to restock and all that. But there's just an energy to the first couple hours of a big new release day on Gen Con that is... Um, is electrifying and, and really exciting. It is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Uh, Eric, thank you so much yes. for hanging out You're for as long as you did. Yeah. Um, I'm going to wrap up the show and then we'll try to do a little bit of Q&A before I, we have to Happy 23 to. skidoo out of here. Sounds great. All right. Uh, okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you learned a lot. I know that I did. Uh, if you uh, liked a particular cover, let me know down in the comments. I'll make sure Eric sees the best ones and we'll laugh and high five over how awesome some of that artwork is and uh, be happy that it's coming out soon if you are interested in pre-ordering or would like to know more about these products you just saw hit up pathfinder second edition.com and that will take you to our page that has everything there uh and in the meantime for paizo and for eric mona and for me i'm your old buddy dan thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again next time bye